Okay, I'm gonna show you guys today um, another way to grow your green beans or your peas, or, you know, I use these things for a lot of things. So you've seen me use the TP style for my beans, which I really like. I like it better than putting the string and stuff up. Um, any vine and bean does really good on them, okay? And I have a video uh, from several years ago of making these wire baskets for tomatoes. These are concrete wire. And uh, they are really one of the most versatile garden cages that you can have and cheap to make. Uh, it'll seem like a lot if you go buy a whole roll of concrete wire, but you're gonna get tons of cages. I'd say you get 40 cages or more out of a roll. I don't remember how, I bought a whole roll once and made them. But I don't remember how many I got, but I think I've got about 40. So uh, I had, I made a lot. So I'm gonna show you this morning, um, I'm gonna plant beans in them and I've grew peas in them several times and they do really good in them. And uh, you know, peas don't vine as good, I wouldn't say, as a bean does. So peas, you know, you can have a good fence for them to cling to. But if you plant them in these cages, they do excellent. So we're gonna plant some greasy beans in them and kind of see how they, they do in the cage. I've never grew the greasy beans in the cage. Okay, I have uh, five baskets here. I may go get one more. And I'm gonna plant greasy beans in these. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to show you. You see, I run my plow through here. I got kind of like two little rows. But I'm just going to kind of make me a circle. And then I'm going to plant seeds around that. And we're probably going to put... Uh, Probably about 10 or 12 seeds in there. You could probably go a little heavier, but you don't want them so thick they choke out. All right, that's about 10 or 12 probably. So I just planted them in a little circle there. You could plant one. If you planted one seed for every line on this cage, it'd probably be perfect. So I'm just going to cover them up with a little dirt. Get the rocks out of there. And I'm going to leave them alone now. That's good to go. So we're going to see how they do compared to growing them on a fence or growing them on the teepee. So I've got uh, all five of these planted and we're going to check back in with them here in a few weeks. If you want to check out the video on how I make these um, tomato cages, I'll try to post it maybe right up here on this link. Um, super easy to make. Roll of concrete wire. You can buy it in, a, I don't remember if it's a 100 foot roll, 120 foot roll, but it's really heavy wire and uh, it will last you for years and years and years. Um, I, my neighbor has some that's probably 30 some years old and he's still using them. And uh, really easy to make and will last you a lifetime and very, very much cheaper and a lot better than the ones you buy at like the box store. So check that out and uh, you can use them for everything. Um, I'll be using them for peppers, tomatoes, peas, and beans, you name it, you can put it in it. Um, and you can also, you can cut them in half, like these here, you know, they're about five foot tall. You can cut them in half and make you some short ones for like pepper plants. And I have several small ones as well. And you know, if the ends of them get wore off and broke, you just trim off a layer and uh, you got new little, they got little stakes like on the end of them. So anyway, uh, we're going to try the greasy beans in them. And if you need something, uh, if you ain't got much space and you need to grow more vertical, these cages will help you tremendously. Okay, this is on the lower end. This is the little corn patch. It's about a foot high. Doing okay. Um, just run the, I've healed it up once and I just run the push plow through, threw a little dirt up. But for a little rock patch, it's doing pretty good. We'll go on up here. Pepper plants is all looking nice. Getting ready to plant some, excuse me. We're getting ready to plant some uh, greasy beans right here. And I've got to plant a few more zucchini and squash few of my seed didn't come up it was old and it hadn't been in the freezer so i got one that came up right there 
going to replant it. Had to replant these cucumbers. Something, uh, I don't know if they didn't come up or something got them. But I just planted those yesterday or day before. Tomatoes is all looking pretty good. I pruned them. Still need to prune a little bit more. I try to take a lot of the bottom leaves off and take the suckers out. There's a big sucker I need to get. But they're starting to bloom. Plants are looking pretty good. Um, this week I'll be fertilizing with my fish emulsion I bought. You can see Finley's little garden. He's doing good. He's got a few weeds here he needs to get now that the rain's over with. We had rain for like two weeks straight. Just now getting the garden looking good again. Here's the broccoli and cabbage, what's left of it. I had those cages on it that you see there. And it kept the guinea off, but they were getting too big to leave the cages on. So I took them off and uh, she's found them again. So I don't know if they're going to do anything or not. I'll watch them another week or two. And if she leaves them alone, they'll be good. And if not, then I may just have to uh, take them up. Finley's little TP of pole beans is doing good. They're starting to vine. These are the rattlesnake pole beans. You see there's a little vine starting to run. I'm not planting as many beans this year. We have a lot from last year canned still. So it's, a, it's coming along for this just to be a little rocky patch. Should have a good crop of rocks. Pretty morning this morning. Gonna be another hot one. I'm dusting these beans a little bit as well. Uh, I've still got one more little garden patch that I'm gonna be working on where I grew last, um, out behind the barn where I have the fence that I put up. I'm gonna plant it this year some and plant some more corn and beans there. Putting a little bit of dust on these bean plants. All right. That should be all the dusting I need to do. Now I'm going to take you out here and show you something I done yesterday. I didn't get it on video. I didn't really have time. You know how it is. Sometimes you just got to go and do. We'll go out here. <clears throat> If you remember, I said I caught a swarm of bees. And uh, they um, had been in there for a while. So I knew they had to be filling up their, their box. So I just hadn't had a chance to move them yet. So I took last night and put them in a bigger hive. Let me get over here where you can see. You can see here... Um, uh, last night I took them out of the swarm trap, which had five racks, and I put them in a full-size hive. And uh, they had filled uh, all five racks up, of course, completely full, and I had a lot of capped honey. And a couple racks, the whole bottom half of the rack was all nicely capped and brewed, and uh, larva. And they're doing really good. This is a strong swarm right here. And the uh, only problem I did when I built the swarm trap which if you leave them in there just, you know, maybe a few weeks, it wouldn't be a problem. But where I had left them in a little too long, they had built, my box was about that much too deep. So they had built about that much comb on the bottom of my racks. So I ended up having to cut some of that off. I'll show you here. And of course, I hated to do that. And uh, I wish I had had some more empty racks. And I would have tried to um, maybe rubber band this in but like, see this little piece right here? I had to cut the, some pieces about this big off. And this had some honey and it. Uh, some of it wasn't capped. But some of this, um, I took home with me last night about a jar full. And uh, the less, rest of this the little pieces I've left here. And I'll flip the camera around now. And the bees is already cleaning it up, taking it back. Okay, you can see here, a lot of this is uh, capped uh, cells, like with eggs in them, you know. 
there's the little larva. And then the lighter color here, this was some uncapped honeycomb. This was just a little pieces built on top of the rack that I scraped off. And uh, it really hurt me to have to, to lose that, but I didn't know any other way to get that in my hive. So if I'd had an empty rack, I could, uh, I guess I still could. I may try to find one today. I might be able to take and mount this somehow in a little frame and put it in a hive. We'll see. But I just done this last night and I laid all this here and they're taking out a lot of this little honey and stuff. But you can see here, you know, they had built comb on top of that, on top of the racks. This is the lid upside down. And uh, I had to just, it kind of destroyed that, you know, whenever I took it apart. But that was my fault. I shouldn't have left them in it as long as I did. And they wouldn't have built all the wild comb. That's why I call it just the wild. They're cleaning out that box right now. So I need to cut this swarm trap down a little bit. But they're doing good. They're out, just now got started for the day.